Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Chandler, uh, what did we say today? We want a new edit. Just we because walk. LeBron and Giannis are out, <laughs> we want a new cartoon. The animation should be here. Mm. should not take more than a day. <laughs> I say knowing no, where to go. It's the power of LeBron. It's the power of LeBron. This is Run It Back, and this happens to be FanDuel TV. My name is Michelle Beadle. This is Chandler Parsons. And our friend Lou Williams is also joining us today. And we are a guest happy of the show. That. Yeah, no, you're not, you're not a guest today. Yeah. Now you are a co-host. Yeah. By the way, welcome back. Snuggy top, that's yeah, fun. That cozy, cozy Daniels. Is it I, a onesie? I went comfortable today. Does it go all the way down nah, your feet? No, it's a two-piece. Oh, okay, two-piece. Nah, it's a, it's a, it's a top, and, top and a bottom, but I only got the top on. I think it's like a nah. robe hoodie. All the way down. I have one of those actually. It's a red one. It's called a snuggy or something like that. Anywho, one I'm game last night. <laughs> Shut it. And it was a great game. The garden was mm, quite loud, honestly. Pacers Knicks, Brunson left the game with an injury in the first quarter, but we all knew he'd be back. And he was. 2 0 series lead now, 131 21 final. He finished with 29, 24 of those came, of course, in the second half. OG Ananobi was having a night, a playoff career high of 28. And then he got hurt. Uh, Dante, 28. Tyrese Halliburton did have the better night. You knew he would. 34 points, 9 assists. But Jalen Brunson misses the entire mm -hmm. second quarter for what they called a right foot injury. And then comes back, scores 24 in the second half. It also happened to be the fourth uh, <clears throat> and on the anniversary of Willis Reed's dramatic return from Game 7. They played the video. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of amazing. <clears throat> that's the craziest thing that's on the anniversary of Willis yeah. Reed where he did this. And just, can this guy do anything? anything wrong, Jalen Brunson. He goes out, he's like playing it. through injury. He misses an entire, probably 12 minutes, because Tibbs doesn't ever take him and Josh Yeah, he did. he did. But he misses 12 minutes and still manages to have 29 points, go 11 of 18 from the field, miss an entire quarter, go through halftime, basically be out 30 to 45 minutes, and then still come mm -hmm. back and absolutely dominate in the second half. And he made so many big shots and big plays in the fourth quarter. Like, wait, that is a tough, tough shot. That's great defense. <sighs> That is just bully ball. It's great touch. He 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 beat them in so many different <laughs> ways last night with his outside shooting, with bullying guy like Nimhard and Halliburton. It's a, when you look at him, they look like the same size. But Jalen Brunson is so strong. He's got such a low center, center of gravity. He's crafty. He's got a great. He can create space. He almost plays like Luca, like in slow, oh, his own pace. You can't really speed him up. You can't put a taller, bigger, slower guy on him because he'll go by you. Can't put a small guy on him because he'll bully ball him. But the fact that he did this after having an injury, after leaving, missing yeah. that much time and coming out and didn't miss a beat, like this is a bad game for him having 29 points. It is. It's, it's, it's under. And it was unbelievable. And he literally closed the game and made clutch plays down the stretch every single possession. What are they doing back there, Lou? Because, you know, as a mortal person myself, I would think that if my foot hurt that bad that – I'm, I'm picturing done. varsity I'm blues. Done. Like, they, can he play? Yeah, like, like, like are they? <laughs> and he came out, apparently, he came out in the half to, to shoot around, and, and the crowd went nuts, and he was like calming them down because he wasn't 100% sure whether he'd be able to go or not. But he did, Lou. So, what, what goes on back there that makes things better? Depends on, it really depends on the severity of the injury. Sometimes you, you can be back there getting x rays, you can be back there getting stitches, getting retaped. If you got an ankle issue, if there's something going on with your knee, you might be able to get some treatment, get some heat on it, get a quick little massage. Um, a stretch, it's, it's, it can be an array of things depending on what you're dealing with, you know. So depending on what you're dealing with, I think it looked like a, what was it, a thigh or, or something like that that he was, he was dealing with. Was so they probably had to do some stretching to get him. Was it his, his right foot? foot? Yeah, which is I, it's I crazy because there's not really much you can do that besides maybe tape it or put a different shoe on. Type maybe a, yeah, so maybe a, a medicine of some sort. Yeah, maybe. A, right. Yeah. What Chandler said, probably just a, a massage, uh, mm. uh, get a retape and and just just evaluate where he was. And I'm pretty sure he was back there fighting like hell, letting them know that he was going back in his basketball game. And I'm sure they were on his side. Okay. Sometimes in the regular season, they'll probably shut you down and be like, ah, oh, we'll try again another day. But being in the position that they're in, I'm pretty sure him and the training staff, they were on the same page of trying to get him back on that floor um, for that third quarter. It is crazy that it's the 54th anniversary of the Willis Reed moment. You don't even have to be a monster basketball fan. You, you hear Willis Reed and you're like, oh, I know what that re re refers <laughs> to. And then I'm thinking they show all these videos during the course of the game. You don't realize that he's about to get hurt. It's it's nuts. It's, it's movie-like in it the is. way everything gets played out. Um, somebody who did not have a Hollywood ending to his evening would be Rick Carlisle. He was not happy, got two technicals, ejected out of this one late in the fourth. And then he opened up his press conference um, with a long laundry list of what went wrong. Here he is. Small market teams deserve an equal shot. They deserve... They deserve 
a fair shot. No matter where, no, no matter where they're playing. No matter where That's they're an playing. Excuse. I got an issue with that because okay, two ahead. small market teams on it's the other excuse. conference, the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Minnesota Timberwolves, have, don't have the same excuse, and they're not That's saying true. things like that. And they're an even smaller market than the Indiana Pacers. So I don't love this from Rick. I understand what he said. Coaches and players, they just want consistency. So when they yeah. allow the New York Knicks and they allow the Pacers in their first series to be physical and game one to be a little more physical, and then it changes on a play-to-play -play basis, that's tough. Or when you when, a, when they miss a call and then they give you a makeup call on the other end, they they don't like that. So they just want it to be consistent, which I understand. And some of these some of these plays, when you look back again, when you do the replay thing and you slow it down, of course they are <laughs> fouls. They are more physical than things. But there's also some other plays where they got away from having fouls, where they were a little too of physical course. in New York, and they and the Knicks didn't get the whistle. So I respect Tyrese Halliburton, honestly after this more than Rick Carlisle's comments, he said, it's not the refs. We lost yeah. this game because we got outworked. We got outplayed. The refs had nothing to do with the end of this game. Now, as a coach, I love that my coach is sticking this, sticking up for us, and I, I know what he's doing. Now he's trying to get the momentum for him. <laughs> they know they have home court coming up, so hopefully they're now getting the, the benefit of the doubt on the whistle. But this is the small market thing I'm not buying. The two of the best teams right now in the NBA are the Oklahoma City Thunder yeah. and Minnesota yeah. Timberwolves, and they are smaller markets. Those are small markets, Lou. Yeah, I, I respect Coach Carlisle a, a great deal, right? But I feel like this was his built-in excuse. This was his built-in uh, angle of how he was going to take this series. You know, he had a similar complaint um, after game one, you know, talking about small markets and fouls and this and that. Listen, the New York Knicks had three guys with 25-plus points shooting over 50% from the field. That has nothing to, do to, nothing to do with refereeing. That's about game planning. That's about going out and completing your game plan. And the Indiana Pacers hadn't been able to do that in New York. The great news is the next two games are in that small market that you're talking about in Indiana. Now, if, is the whistle going to go your way? Is the fan base and everybody else is going to be behind you and rally behind you guys? Absolutely. You got your ass kicked twice on the road. I think the New York Knicks outplayed them. There hasn't been a huge discrepancy that I've seen visibly from the difference between how the game has been refereed from the New York Knicks to uh, the Indiana Pacers. So I just feel like this is something that he's had on his mind that he was looking for any way to kind of get this point across to the media, and I don't think it's working. I mean, he um, we were talking about this morning, he's submitted to the league, I want to say 70-something plays yeah. from both games for, for their review. Which, by the way, if you're the guy that received that, the woman that received oh. that in the office, you're like, oh, for the love of God, how many plays do we have to look at? And you at? know the other team sees everything you submit. It's kind of weird. The are just like, it's like every possession. That's a, it, it is. That's yeah. a lot. Uh, there was a specific one, too, that he mentioned is the, is the Halliburton getting shoved in the back. He brings up the fact that Halliburton has a sore back. Everybody knows that. And then Hart shoves him. So you have a point here. Again, yeah, and when it's not a bang-bang transition play and the refs are probably looking at three different situations here, yeah, of course, that's a foul. You can't just push a guy like that. Hmm. Now, again, is this possession, though, game-altering? Is this why they lost the game so they didn't get a shove in the back when he wasn't even trying to shoot or create his own shot? He literally was just dribbling the ball out. He didn't is even a, fall. Is it a foul? Yeah, sure. Could that have changed, you know, the rotations for Hart if that was his fourth or fifth foul? But, like... You can't talk, you can't praise physicality and, and and playoff basketball and intensity and then bitch and moan when it's when you don't get the whistle. Lou's like watching it intently. Lou's the same way, like, though, yeah, right? Because what I'm is annoying, to, Lou? If if, if Tyrese fell, they would have called that's, it. That's so that different. would piss me off. Like if he, so you 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 discipline flopping, but right. if he would have flopped there and actually fell on the floor, it would have been a foul. So that is why players do flop because they get the call more often than not. I'm proud that he didn't fall. And I'm yeah. But I'm also thinking about Josh Hart losing his mind in the second half because he pushed someone and they called it and during, a, during a tight game when they're, when they're up two points. You know, so Indiana has gotten some of these breaks. Are the referees going to get everything right? Absolutely not. You know, obviously they've been flawed throughout the, throughout the postseason and everybody's on whether one side or another somebody is going to complain. I think the referees have been doing a decent job. I think the New York Knicks have just been a better team so far. Um, the seven of the uh, the eight playoff games that the Knicks have won so far have been clutch wins. Six and one in those, um, or they have been clutch games. Can they keep? I mean, look, we're going to get to the OG and Anobi part as well because they seem to get some bad news a little bit every day or so. Can they keep this up? 
I mean, they've been pretty consistent, it's, Michelle. It's crazy. And this isn't the most talented team that's left in the field. This isn't the most, you know, offensive skill team. This team just simply plays harder than you. Yeah. They play defense. They outwork you. They grind every single position. They have guys that just have mastered their role. They know that Dante DiVincenzo, he's playing defense. He's shooting threes. Josh Hart <laughs> is crashing the offensive glass. He's diving on the floor. He's doing all those little things. Everywhere. Jalen Brunson, there's no such thing as a bad shot. You have a mismatch. Every time you have the basketball, go be aggressive and score. Hartenstein, go get a tip out late in the game that makes that big momentum shifting play where then we can get another swing, swing three to Deuce McBride. Your role is to come in and be aggressive. So everybody has their role. Everybody stays in their lane, and they just play hard. In the NBA, half the battle is playing defense and playing hard. There's obviously talent can win you a lot of games on, on, on certain nights, but the New York Knicks don't have that talent level mm -hmm. per se, but they do have the ethic and the dog and the toughness in them where that alone was going to win them a lot of games. It's almost like they're being tested, Lou. Then, Every we're gonna keep losing dudes yeah, in the series. Oh, they're gonna be tested, but this is good for them because when those tests come up, they have the experience of winning close basketball games. They have the experience of learning how to grind out these situations, dealing with the referees, dealing with the fans, dealing with the pressure of it being the playoffs. So the deeper and deeper that you go, these experiences are gonna be valuable. It's gonna go to New York Knicks way a lot of these times with them having so many close games. I would have to imagine that the seven players that he's been playing, that changes just by necessity, right? I mean, you may not have a choice. Well, yeah, and then especially if you get more to get to the OG thing, yep. if he's missing, then there's got to be the next man up, which I said last week. They do have guys they that do. can fill that in. They do have the Shake Milton's. They do have the Alec Burks. Are, are they OG? No. And uh, OG, like, there, there's no one on their roster that does what he does. That's the problem. That would be a brutal blow if he's out for a long time, right? Because he, his versatility, his defensive presence, his shot making at certain points of the game, there's no one like him. And they've already been through everything. They lost Randall, which almost helped them in a way because it let – Jalen Brunson become Jalen Brunson of who he is today. They just lost Mitchell Robinson again. He was such a factor when they play a team like Philly and the, the physicality and the defense that he played on Joel Embiid. So now if you lose OG, again, they have the pieces that can step up. They have the guys that clearly can play the minutes. Yeah. But you're going to have to look to that bench at some point and fill in these guys like a, a you know a, a Alec Burks or something. Is Jericho some, Sims hurt or is he just No, I think not he's good. just not playing. Okay, so I mean – Maybe so he but gets these guys, the see. Shake Miltons and Alec Bergs, will have to play if OG's out. Lou, uh, Josh Hart has played 374 of the 389 possible minutes this postseason. First of all, well done. Uh, you don't see that very often. But what do you make of that? How, how do you react? If I'm Josh Hart, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I'm happy as hell that my coach trusts me so much that he needs to keep me on the floor, but I also want a little break. This is gonna be a long run. It's looking like the New York Knicks are in control of this series and more than likely gonna move past Indiana and head to the next, uh, head to the next round. And they're gonna play, you know, obviously probably one of the better teams and that's gonna be the Boston Celtics that's been in this league this year. And so again, these are great experiences for him. Everything should be a learning experience, but at the same time, you want some rest. You want to be able to have an opportunity to get on and off the floor and keep your body fresh. And so can Tibbs keep playing seven guys? It's going to be tough. He's going to have to find some in this somewhere on that bench. He's going to have to trust another guy or two, especially if they want an opportunity to try to move forward in the Eastern That's Conference, the uh, try to get out of the Eastern Conference and beat the Boston Celtics. They're going to have to use more guys. <laughs> Imagine being like the young guy drafted to the Knicks last year or a young guy that signed to be Josh Hart's backup. Like, oh, oh I'm going to get some opportunity here. It's and like then the they just guy. never play because the cat plays the entire game. I just can't I picture that, like that I mean, talk with the agent. Like, hey, don't you're going to get opportunity. Don't worry. He can't play the whole time. Your number's going to come. <laughs> no, you're not. This guy's going to play the entire game, the entire series. Hey, Chandler. <laughs> Chandler, I was AI's backup. It took me two years right, to get on the floor. I mean. That's Alan Iverson, though. That, that makes sense. Actually, that's funny you bring but up listen, AI. I, Josh Hart is playing. He, Josh Hart is playing Alan Iverson minutes, man. It's, true. it's the same thing. But isn't AI like He's wasn't that Alan Iverson minutes? Wasn't it Philly and was it Indy? They they sat AI for a little bit of rest um, during a playoff run just because that was the, the strategy they decided to go with. And I only bring it up because right now the Knicks are up two nothing. They go back to Indy here, or they go to Indy. I don't know if OJ is even going to be able to play. It looked like a hamstring. Who knows how bad it is? But I've heard theories already being floated out there that perhaps maybe you rest, don't do this. Don't do this. You Beatles. rest a Brunson, maybe a, just give the other guys a chance to go out there and get know. some work done. I, look, I'm only saying what others have said. Hell no. no nothing. No. Not why even would a little. You, why would you play with the game like that? Why would you even think about playing with the game like that?
I no, agree. This is like the, no. the, if Joel Embiid is healthy, he can play. If Kawhi Leonard's healthy, he can play. This isn't the point of season of rest. What if you're kind of healthy? And also, we're talking about Tom Thibodeau. You think that's, he's going to rest this guy? I mean, if that's he can the play? bottom line. He would make him tape up his ankles tomorrow in practice just to show him he can play, let alone play him. Like, if he can play, he is going to play. And again, like I said, he is so valuable to that team. There are so many other guys that can fill in, can do things. They can't do and provide what he provides. So they need him. They need him in this series because this series is far from over. And oh, for sure. Damn sure need him the next round against Boston. It's hard to even get that far ahead right now because they just seem so hobbled. But, you know, also the adrenaline wears off after the game last night. We don't know how bad that foot actually is. Like, it might he might have awakened this morning and been like, I can't walk. Yeah, for sure. Which I mean, would well, be worst. And that's going to be something, again, when you're in the playoffs, you, you need time to heal yeah, these injuries. we have and they, today. And they don't, yeah. <laughs> you have they today and half of tomorrow. They don't have time. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, they're not like the Nuggets who get an entire week off in right. between games. It's a gift. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton, much, much better showing for him. 34 points Pascal Siakam Miles Turner not so much combined for 20 they were 10 of 29 from the field it's kind of crazy that you can't seem to get the three together on one night to be great yeah that's tough it's tough for any team when you, when you need a collective effort and you look at the Knicks last night they got a little bit of something from every single player that checked in the game last night I knew this was going to happen Tyrese Halliburton yeah. it was just uh, the fact that his over under was one point above Josh Hart was crazy Silly. to me and I took full advantage of that in my personal life I saw that the, oh congrats <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was crazy and he's too good to be held down like that and I knew he was going to be aggressive and th look the Pacers have done enough to win these two games have they no mm. but they're not going back to Indiana you know disgruntled they're not going down deficit they're, they don't feel like Cleveland right now against Boston. I, they 100% I, they still think they have enough. They've done enough to win this game. They need to tweak a few things. They need to continue to play fast. What makes them different is the pace they play at when they play the pick and roll. They play the two-man game. They shoot a bunch of threes. They're almost slowing down playing the New York Knicks game. They have to. That's not what won them the in-season tournament. That's not what got them a hot, uh, you know, offensive pace, the craziest rapid pace in the NBA during the regular season. So they need to get back to that. But Ty it starts with Tyrese Halliburton, and it was great to see him kind of get back to himself be aggressive and dominate the game. Anything you saw there, Lou, as far as, you know, anything different from Chandler saying that? Get all three together on the same page. No, nah, I, yeah, I agree with him 100%. Um, everything that he said was, was true. As far as Siakam and Turner go, you know, look, they got 30, 30 attempts in between them. So the, the opportunities that are there, they got to make the best of them, and they haven't been able to do that so far. So, you know, so I think that'll be different in their home gym, on their home floor with their with their home base. And, you know, they'll play better basketball, but they just got to play better. It's not really a science to that. It's going to be loud in there. Uh, T.J. McConnell, this was a bit of a head scratcher in this one. Uh, he had 10 points, 12 assists. But in the fourth, he only played four minutes, um, which is crazy because he seems to be the one guy that defends Jalen Brunson the best. And it was a two point game when he left. That, was that a coaching error I mean I hate to call it that but I mean, why sure just because they yep. lost and like and he has been that spark plug and TJ McConnell is such an interesting player because you look at him and he looks <laughs> like my the accountant worst. yeah but it's it's but he plays hard he talks shit he he's does tough. he's such a savvy player and he's always been a worker he outplay he outsmarts you and he's just crafty so the the fact that he would had so much success early in this game and didn't play at the end of the game like this is a nasty little I didn't mover. get it look at him bark at the base like ah, <laughs> I love him mm -hmm. and so yeah when I'm getting this production and those other guys are struggling but they did get something from from Ben Shepard which was which was nice Obi Toppin had a great game yeah. so as a coach it's hard to kind of to, to, you know, manage all that. But, yeah, I don't think there's any reason why T.J. McConnell, who's been so good in this series and last series, only played four minutes in the fourth quarter. I think that will obviously change in game three. Yeah, Lou, even the announcers yeah. were like, I bet T.J. McConnell's on his way back in after a real quick break, and then it, it didn't yeah. happen. I think Indiana, I think they failed the eye test, right? If you're watching that game, you're looking at the impact that T.J. McConnell is having on both ends of the floor, how he's playing, how he's controlling traffic. He's putting pressure on, on the defense by getting in the lane, even finishing at the rim, and he's picking up guys. He's junking up the game. They failed the eye test, and this is where it comes in with coaching. A lot of times you have coaches that are game managers, and then you have coaches that make adjustments on the fly. Sometimes you just manage the minutes. At nine minutes, there's an automatic sub because this, this is your slot of time where you're going to play. Great coaches, and I'm saying, not saying uh, Coach Carlisle isn't a great coach, but a lot of great coaches, they make adjustments and they go with the group of guys that they feel like can win them the basketball game. I don't feel like Indiana gave themselves that opportunity last night by sitting T.J. McConnell as long as they did and how he was playing. That was surprising. to see. I kept waiting for him to get back in there. What do they need to do to get back in the series? 
Well, like I said, they got to do what had what gave them success early on, and Quick. they need to play fa play fast, yep. play fast, run to your spots, have the spacing down. Tyrese Halliburton be aggressive with the ball, and do what made you different in that in season tournament where you can. It's hard for teams to adjust, and the New York Knicks like to bog it down. They like to slow it down. They like to be physical. But when you can get deflections, you can get steals, and they can get out and transition, do what they do best. It opens up the entire game for them. And obviously, they need to have Miles Turner. They need to have him be better. They need to have these Siaka be more efficient. Even Though Siakam did hit some big shots in the kind of the off the block post up in the fourth quarter last night, they, they for them to beat this team as they're so good defensively, they need to have those 130, 140 point games, and they have to they obviously have to play better defense too, and they got to find a way to negate everybody on the Knicks contributing. But they, like I said, this season is far from over. I don't think they're hanging their head right now. I think they're game three they win that, and then all of a sudden we got a real situation on our hands. Yeah, so they're they're in a fine shape. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like Cleveland right now. You know what I mean? They don't feel like these teams are just getting absolutely Forgot about smacked. That like, yeah, like the, they, are, they are okay. Now, if they lose game three, night-night, but right now they're fine. Maybe not fly Reggie Miller into the garden to call the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got to junk the game up a little bit, Chandler. That's that's the only thing that I saw. They got to junk the game up. You know, Jalen Brunson is too comfortable out there. I don't know why in the hell they keep leaving them hard on this island with Jalen Brunson and these ISOs. Run and jump. Get the ball out of his hands. Trap him at half court in some of these high pick and rolls. They're just literally letting him play one-on-one, -on -one, and Jalen Brunson is winning, winning these matchups 95% of the time down the floor. They got to give him different looks. Got to get the ball out of his hands to make somebody else beat you other than that. Hell, if DiVincenzo is going to have 28, make him have 38. But it ain't going to be Jalen Brunson. <clears throat> I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's kind of like the method that Minnesota is taking with, with, with Denver. Like, make these other guys beat us. We're going to have a guy guarding him. We're going to have a big, another guy floating. We're going to have opportunities to trap, to blitz. But I'm with Lou. Like, you can't. If, I'm gonna, if the New York Knicks are going to beat me, it ain't going to be Jalen Brunson. Don't let that be the story. Uh, we got a little you buying that right now, Chandler. You are up first. <laughs> While reflecting on his rookie season, Victor Wembanyama said he did not exceed yeah. expectations and should have done more. Yes, <laughs> he should have. Uh, you buying that? No, I love that he's saying this. I think he's it. very humble. I think he is going to be the face of this league for many, many years to come. But he exceeded my expectations. The, 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 he blew us away every single game with the highlights that he did, the things he does with the basketball. We've never seen before. This is a skill set that literally we have not seen with that size and that stature. He stayed healthy for the most part. Yeah. So I think he blew expectations out of the water. He showed that uh, he's not a bust. He's, he's not. He's here. for He's for real. And some of the highlights, if you look back at his highlight package just from this <laughs> season, it is insane. It so, is. It, so, no, I completely disagree with this, but I do love that he's saying that. I My advice is just put together a little loop. That's what I do before I go to bed at night, it's and I just watch the loop of the highlights. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I bet you actually do that, too. I do. Uh, Lou, <laughs> the Memphis Grizzlies, I am specifically only asking you this, are planning to retire Tony Allen's jersey next season. How are we feeling? Are we buying this? I want, I want to give Memphis fans about five seconds to get in here so they can hear this compliment, so they can oh. get off of our backs, right? I, I absolutely feel like Tony Allen deserves for his, his jersey to be retired in the Raptors in Memphis, along with Mark Gasol, along with uh, Zebo, along mm. with Mike Conley at some point. When you talk about grit and grind basketball in the city of Memphis, Tony Allen was the guy that embodied that toughness. He was the guy that took everything that the city of Memphis was about, he put it on his shoulders, and those guys created culture. So that started with them, how the Memphis Grizzlies play now, to the way that the fans interact with the players, um, to their environment. All of those things were built on the, on the foundation of the grit and grind Grizzlies. And Tony Allen was your very, play, very best defensive player on that basketball team in a world full of guys like a Mark Gasol, like a Zebo, like I said, like, uh, like my man Mike Conley. All of those guys, they held it down on the offensive end, and, Mike Con uh, and Tony Allen was that dog on the defensive end, and he gave you that grit. He gave you that grind. He gave you a personality. He gave you something to look forward to if you were a Memphis Grizzlies basketball fan. So this is very much well-deserved. May I? Oh, by all means. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I played on this team. Don't I, mess it up, I played on this team. I signed. I signed on this team. Uh, Tony Allen was the heart and soul of that team. And idiots that don't know basketball will look at his stats on the offensive mm. end and say he shouldn't be in the, in the Hall of Fame. He averaged nine points his career. This is so well deserved, and he embraced defense. He's screaming first team. Like I said, the whole culture of grit and grind. 
Mark, Mark Gasol, unbelievable player. Mike right. Conley, best teammate I probably ever had. But when I think of grit and grind, I think of Tony Allen and Zach Randolph, and they deserve everything that they're going to get. He definitely should have his jersey retired. And most guys don't care about defense like he did. So when you find a rare breed like this, you got to celebrate them. And, and like I said, this is – I love Tony Allen, one of my favorite teammates I've ever had. So – Shout out, T.A. All this Memphis Jersey retirement, how you feeling? But yours next, baby. I probably won't go to it, but I, <laughs> just because I don't want to run, run the risk of assassination, but I, I will watch it. You are it. hated. I will watch it, yeah. We're going to take a quick break, but we come back. Mario Chalmers joins the show. There he is. Maybe Rio. He would like, they'll burn your jersey, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. For you. I don't even think I have a jersey. <laughs> they literally got rid of all of it. Run it back, run it up, run it back. Champ already. Mario Chalmers. One on one, authentic. I don't see no competition. Yeah. Champ already. Oh, oh, he is back. Happy right. Thursday. Mario Chalmers joins the show once again. Um, great timing because it's on the heels of the Pat Riley State of the Union address, which we all love. <laughs> and he was uh, he was a little spicy this time around, Mario. We had the, a lot of words for Jimmy and uh, some words for Tyler Hero. But we'll start with Jimmy Butler. Said he can still be a 1A player, but he's got to have some change. He's got to do something differently in his routine and his approach. Uh, if you're <clears throat> Jimmy Butler and you hear that, how do you react, do you think? Um, it just depends what he means. Uh, when... when Pat tells you something like that. It could be a couple of different hidden meanings. Um, mm -hmm. It could be weight and body fat, which I don't think is a problem. It could be getting to the gym earlier. It could be not liking somebody that Pat doesn't like. So that can entail a lot of things. Um, it just all depends what Pat meant by that message. Yeah, what is it like when Pat, I mean, if Pat Riley seems like a very intimidating but cool guy. Um, so when he says things, as a player, are, are you sort of more sensitive to it? Do you take it differently than you would perhaps, you know, name any other GM in the business? Um, I would say my first couple of years in the league, I held on to everything he said. Like, it was just every word that he said I tried to do. And then, like, as you get older in the league and you start seeing different things, it's kind of like... I could separate basketball and life. Like I don't need to go home and be mad at my wife or mad at a girlfriend just because we lost a game. And that's mm. what that's what Pat wants. That's how intense Pat wants you to be during the playoffs. It's like oh. go home. You, if you lose, you got to be mad at your family, mad at everybody, <laughs> and come back the next day ready to go. So it's just different things. Pat's a real intense guy. Um, he's been around the NBA forever, so he's seen it all. He's done it all. He just knows what it takes to win. So he's always going to try to bring the best out of you. His delivery might not be the best sometimes, but he means well every time. Yeah, that's my thing, Rio, is if, okay, I'm Jimmy Butler, I'm the face of the franchise, I'm the star player, yeah. and, and this dude's telling me to keep my mouth shut, like kind of talk to me like, like I'm his son. Not only a Jimmy Butler do I feel a certain way, like why don't you just you know text me that or tell me that you could have used a different kind of language in the media, but if I'm also a free agent that's looking to go there this summer, does that kind of alter like kind of your view of, damn, this guy just calls out a star player? What's he going to say to me if I go there? <laughs> Um, I don't know, because I don't think there's nothing wrong with what Jimmy said. And the reason I feel like that is because Miami beat Boston last year, and Jimmy played. So it was, it's not like he's telling a lie. It's not like he's actually being arrogant or talking. He's stating facts. Like last year when he played, they, they beat Boston. They went to the finals. So for him to have that same type of confidence, you want all your star players to have that confidence. Like if I'm on the court, I can't be beat. So it's a double-edged sword. It's like um, – we want you to be confident and, and, and talk and, and be that boasterous guy and let people know what it is here, but we also want you to tone it down and not be too much and, and not give other teams any mission to, to hold on to for next year or for next season. But have you ever had a coach or a GM or a team president tell you to shut your mouth? Like, I feel like that was the, the, the usage of the words, I think, would just kind of piss me off. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I'm sensitive. You are sensitive. Um, yeah, I'm definitely with you on that one. Uh, you got to talk to me a certain way. But, yeah, shut your mouth. And, yeah, I'm, I'm not shutting my mouth. You know how I am, CP. <laughs> yeah. And it just reminded me of the Tari. Obviously, J Jimmy Butler's not Tari Eason, but the kid right. on the Rockets, you know, taunting the Warriors. It's like, buddy, you're not playing. Like, this is probably like, right. stay in your lane. Well, can now. you troll, though? That's the question. Jimmy Butler has a better, a way bigger case than Tari Eason. Because sure, he but he there. wasn't playing. But he wasn't playing. So it's like at the end, and they still are. So, like, it's just kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a, wrong, pi a wrong fight to pick. 
Yeah. That's a well fight to pay. It was a weird video too. It was like obviously somebody's <laughs> camera and it just it was odd. I mean probably wasn't supposed to see the light of day, but cameras everywhere. That's the that's the lesson. Ah, it um, felt like it was a setup video. It, yeah, yeah, it did. It, it felt very much it was like a trap. Ha ha, we got him. Uh, <laughs> so he said a lot, right? I mean it, it's it's fine. It's Pat Riley, and as you mentioned, maybe the delivery is not always ideal. Could you see a world where Jimmy Butler is not with the Heat? Would he want to leave? Would he want to be traded? Or is that his home for the rest of his days? Um, with the NBA now, it's, it's always up in the air. I could see him leaving, but I could also definitely see him staying. Um, just the way he embodies the Heat culture. Um, you know, that's his type of basketball. The the hard nose, show to work every day, um, put your hard hat on, and we go into war. So that's the type of style that Jimmy likes to play. So that would be the main reason he stays there. He likes his teammates. And it's Miami at the end of the day. So, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's still a business. So I can see both sides of it and just trying to figure out. But I think he stays. I think they build a, a better team around him and he stays. Yeah, I love Jimmy being like, oh, I love Miami. They embrace me. I love the people here. I'm like, no shit. You love Miami. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. a tough scratch. <laughs> Who doesn't? But Rio, didn't you have like right. a similar situation with Pat Riley where you like he told you everything you did the club the night before or something? Like he put he put someone what? there. Yeah. It was uh, it was like it was during my rookie year. Um, I had went out, and uh, <laughs> and you know me, uh, I was just out having fun, nothing major. And Pat was like, uh, "You went out last night." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. how you know?" He was like, "Yeah, he was at uh, this bar. You had this many drinks of your uh, drink, and then you went home." And I was like, "How do you know everything?" He's like, "Bro, I run, I run Miami. Like, uh, you can't do nothing in Miami without that me is knowing." Classic. That is terrifying. <laughs> now, if I'm a free agent and I hear this, I'm yeah. damn sure not. Going that is a there. much scarier <laughs> thing than I'm shut your mouth. I'm getting controlled outside the facility <laughs> in you, Miami. You wasn't in trouble. I wasn't in trouble. He was just letting yeah. you know, like, you can't do nothing in the city yeah. without me knowing. I like that. He's Which is cool. why it's like terrifying. Yeah. He is so it's mafia. Uh, it's not even funny. Man. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> he, he lose to the Celtics in five. Was never really close. We, we've already decided as a show that Jimmy Butler's not going anywhere. So, mm -hmm. what do they need? What kind of changes do, uh, do they need to make to you know, take on Boston for, for sale next season? I've always said this about the Heat. They need a point guard. And that's just always been my feeling um, with that team. When they got rid of Kyle Lowry, I think that was kind of a bad move just because he was their solid point guard, flow general, um, a person that wasn't really worried about their shots and they was looking to get everybody involved and willing to pass the ball. I think that's the one thing they're missing right now. Um, they got Bam, they got Terry, they got Jimmy, they got Tyler. I mean, that's a solid that's a solid group right there. So you just need to add a, a point guard to that and maybe another three, four guy that can um, do a lot and, you know, help Kevin Love out too. So, you know, they got a solid team. They're just missing that one piece, in my opinion. Rio, I wanted to ask you before we let you go, Jamal Murray, he gets fined $100,000 the other day for throwing the heating pad, which I've never seen that in my life. I thought it was like an axe. I thought it was a ball boy. I thought it was an accident, too. Is that, is that, <laughs> is that, is that something that he should have been suspended for, or is the fine do, do, do it justice? I think the fine is great. I don't like people being suspended during the playoffs, yeah. especially if it's not been, nothing like you really need to send it for. Like, we all thought that was an accident, whether he did it on purpose it happened, nobody got hurt or nothing bad happened. So it's just, the fine is cool for me. Like, yeah. I don't like when players get suspended during the finals cause, or the playoffs because it takes away one of your strengths. It takes away from your team at a crucial moment. That's it cool. gives it's, them an excuse. Yeah. I feel like regular season, fine, suspend. And now, you're getting your ass kicked with Jamal Murray. Let's not suspend yeah. him and make any excuses to deflect on no. what Minnesota's doing. Let Minnesota live. Right. Right. Let them, like, love Minnesota's this. Minnesota's Right? That's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm saying. saying. Like, don't... Minnesota. You I do? I got them in the finals. Damn. I got them in the finals. Before, right before the last two yeah. weeks of what they've done, or no? I said this in the beginning. I said the only team that mm. I think that could beat Denver was Minnesota because they got the two bigs. Two bigs. And I'm I blind. Like I'm, nobody uh, yeah, I, nobody I, I, can guard Well, you're right smarter now. than Andrew us because we've all been sitting here going, wait, this is happening. This yeah. is for I real. I had Phoenix to the <laughs> finals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had the Clippers at first. Yeah, I really so thought the Clippers would be there here. That's fair. It was like, uh, when it came to the playoffs, I was like, nah, I just don't trust them. We're not so, fortunate. Yeah, I got, we got one thing right, and it's the Boston yeah, Celtics. Got, you can all agree on that. And that's not done yet. We don't know. Uh, right. Mario, thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate, appreciate it, bro. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right, back. Vince Carter. Oh, he's already ready. He's always ready. Such a pro. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Back. Yeah, yeah, run it up, run it back, turn it up, run it back. Yeah. We are legendary. Vince Carter, I don't believe what I can fall. We are legendary. Are you kidding me? Half man, half amazing. We're legendary. 
<laughs> Never gets old. Vince Carter's back on the show. Uh, I almost feel like we already had assumed it. So last month when we learned that it's official, that you're going <laughs> into the Hall of Fame, I was like, yeah, duh. But it wasn't official until it was. So how do you find right. out? Is there a knock? Is there a tweet? What happens? Uh, yeah, it's never official, Beetle, till it's official for <laughs> sure. Like, like, I hear people saying all the time, like, oh, it's a guarantee. You know, you guys said it last. I was like, <clears> nah, <throat> nah, until I get that phone call, it, 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 that's when it's real. And, you know, so it, it, <laughs> the phone call came on April Fool's Day. What? And, yeah, it, bad timing. How about this? So, so uh, they said, yeah, you, you know, you'll get a call regardless. Either way, you know, they're going to call to show their respects whether you made it or not. So phone call comes. It was that number that you don't have, you know, on your phone. So it's like, uh, hello? Now, <laughs> mind you, let me say, let me, uh, back story. I had just looked on uh, Instagram and it had a April Fool joke that Vince Carter will be getting his jersey retired at uh, the last game of the season for the Raptors. Uh oh. <laughs> Clearly, I know that's not true, <laughs> but it was an April Fool's thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So I just, I just seen that. Then this phone call happened. So I get a phone call. Hi, this is such and such such uh, with the with the board. You know, blah blah blah. And then they go and they put Mr. Colangelo on, and then he's, you know, he's going to his spiel, and he said, you know, welcome to the Hall of Fame, blah blah blah. And it took everything for me not to say. Are you sure? <laughs> because, <laughs> because, it, yeah, like, like, is this really you? You know, it sounds like you, but is this really you? You know, AI is a is a beast right now. So, and I don't mean Alan Iverson. So, <laughs> I, I, it took me everything to say, "Are you sure?" Not to say, excuse me, "Are you sure?" Oh no! And once it kind of settled in, it was like it was it was amazing. And it's funny to hear the story once we did the official announcement in Phoenix, uh, uh, doing the tur tournament hearing everybody else's story, they all said the same thing. They wasn't sure if it was real because of the day. So they're going to have to change That's, the day. Oh, yeah. that now I'm That's pissed poorly at myself. Planned. Now I'm pissed at myself for not prank calling you and doing this before. They if I would have known, we could all mess with it. Like, that does seem <laughs> yeah, poorly yeah, yeah. planned. And it's not yeah. even FaceTime. It's just a it's just a call. It was a phone call. So Correct. No... Yeah, that's sketchy these days. That's so sketchy. Yeah. That's a catfish waiting to happen. I don't, yeah. I don't really Correct. like that for you. And a couple of people said they didn't answer the phone. Uh, and they missed it and hearing the message and like, nah. And they didn't call back till they got oh the email God. saying, you might want to answer that phone call. That's hilarious. So, yeah. I mean, how could you not think? These are all very logical thoughts to have. Um, so the speech writing part, I know I joke about it, but are you getting help? Are you doing it yourself? Are you going scorched to earth? Are you going to cry? Like, I got a lot go of no, I, it, He's got a ghostwriter. Like, I need, I need I to know I everything. He's got to quit. No, chill, chill. Uh, no ghostwriting. I'm, I'm, it's going to definitely, uh, I mean, come from the heart. It's a lot of people. It's it's mind-boggling uh, for me. And, oh, it's going to be emotional. I already know. I mean, I've said it, like, at, since retirement, gotten a little softer and a little more emotional, uh, <laughs> I think, because of basketball. You know, it, it, it brings a different inner beast in you or out of you. And, you know, that's kind of left a little bit. So now it's, like, more emotional. So everything, <laughs> my, my cousin got... Got married a couple of weeks ago, and bro, I was emotional, and I was just there and happy for it. And I was like, "What is going on?" So, I had a conversation with T Mac about it, and we were just talking, and and he was, you know, and he's like, "Bro, I was so, you know, nervous." And he talked about the speech writing and and leading up to it. So that is nerve wracking, and I've thought about it every day. What angle? How I'm gonna go about it? I think I'm gonna kind of. I'm not gonna go rogue, but I'm gonna kind of go off on my own thing. I want to have just like some, my baselines covered and then go from there because I want it to be, to come from me. So that's why I didn't want yeah. to get any help. Yeah, you can give me some direction, but I want to do it myself. BC, I'll remember it that way. One thing you have to do is just, wear a big old baggy ass suit. Just wear your, yes. wear, wear your draft day suit and do a throwback. <laughs> We it's need funny that. you said that. Uh, I thought about this yesterday. I was like, I wonder where my draft suit is because I would like okay. to wear that and pay homage. Maybe oh, that not would be that classic. Day, no, but that it. would be something for the day before. Like, That'd yeah, we awesome. pay homage it to it. Probably this is still where it don't fit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't it's never fit. Gonna fit. It's a nutty professor. <laughs> no, it won't fit now. It's the wide leg, bro. It Wait, won't fit. Didn't Dwayne Wade have like three <laughs> costume changes during the Yeah, I'm not doing that. That's okay, too much. That's too much to think about. Things we're not doing. Too much to think about. It's our like I I need to worry. Like, like T Max said to me, he wanted to make sure he remembered the That's speech. Smart. Yes, they're going to have it there, what you wrote, but like, you know, the nerves, everything going on. Hey, I'm trying to get them to do QA yeah. instead. Like, oh, that's, that'd be better. Or a teleprompter. Q &A, but a teleprompter you'll still get, or something? There is a teleprompter, a teleprompter there, but do QA and you can kind of, you know, you have your emotions, but you can fit within the time limit because they only give you like seven, eight minutes. 
But some of the guys went 12, 13, Hold on. 15, I heard. I'm so. on to you, VC, because I know exactly that little Q&A you just said when you have to do like a corporate speech that you get paid to go do. It's easy and to you're like, through. just do Q&A. Yeah. I know what you're doing. You're cheating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we've all tried to do that. OK, we're on to Vince on that one. Oh. Do you choose who inducts you, by the way? Have you? Yes, you do choose. Um, I'm, I'm not going to reveal the, the all of the people because I'm still waiting oh. for a uh, 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 yes. So I don't want to be like, yeah, such such going to be there. And then we get there, they're not there. <laughs> but I can confirm T-Mac um, will be there. And he's, a, one, he's one of the guys that I asked. And, and he was like, hell yeah, I was waiting for you to call me. So <laughs> he, it, it seems like in his mind, he already had it in his mind that he was going to be up there. Uh, so that's one. And I think he'll help me through it. Uh, you know, we've had some conversation, and there's a couple, there's a couple, couple others that I have in mind, but there's one for sure that I'm going to ask. So I want to wait before I, I uh, throw his name out. I love that. It'd be, it'd awesome. be awkward if you didn't, I guess. Um, you know, we just had I know because I don't want to say I that. He's like, uh, I can't make right? it. Yeah, exactly. It's like bridesmaids <laughs> and men, all that stuff. Right. Uh, Mario Chalmers was Lou, just what'd on. What you say, man? Oh yeah, Lou, what'd you say? Lou, what'd you I say? said I got a guess, but I, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. Please I'm do. Leave it alone. I know. Yeah, yeah. Text us <laughs> after. Um, Jamal Jamal Murray was fined a hundred thousand dollars. We had that question earlier, and uh, you know you were shaking your head uh, <laughs> behind the scenes. Why do you think he should have been suspended? Be okay, because I, I just, I'm gonna say this, and I, I hear you, and I agree with what you're saying, but at the same time, we as players, if it was on the other foot, what's the first thing you're saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, he should be suspended because I'm I'm just saying it was during play. If it was a a dead ball where stuff wasn't going on, that's fine. That's fine. But like, if somebody steps on it, God forbid, and that other player from someone from the other team gets hurt, Tim Wolves, then then what? Then right. what do we say? Then it's a that's suspension. I, then it's a suspension for sure. Right. Yeah, but Which like, you it's, still, it's, a, it's the same you act. You threw a heat pack yeah, yeah. on the court. I, I know you're trying to hit the ref. I get it, but it that's you threw good. it too far. Like. It, it, you know, my, my play, like they said, oh, yeah, let him play and, you know, and go through this and take his butt kicking it regardless. But yeah. I said, at the same time, if you're suspended, you're sitting at home watching your team get their ass kicked. How do you feel then as well? Yeah. That's a great point. Actually. That's all I'm saying. That's that's my only point. I think so, just his also his reputation is squeaky clean image. He's never done. I, he's I not like a, he's not a previous you know troublemaker. Mm -hmm. So I think that obviously helped the decision as well. Because Lou, you're on the side of don't suspend him during the playoffs, right? Yeah, I think, listen, 100K is, is plenty. I think that's, we haven't seen a fine that large for that type of act ever in the history of the game. So we've seen suspensions. We've seen suspensions for less. I'll be fair. I just think, I just feel like right now, the momentum is going the league's way. Nobody's really having, the fan base, they're, really, they're not having big complaints about what's going on with, when it comes to referees and suspensions and everything. Keep the momentum going, keep the fans happy. I think this is appropriate Lou, for what's on going on. On the flip on. side, we've also never seen a heat pack thrown out in the middle of a play either. And so. we've also not seen the amount of money awesome. these guys are making. This is like awesome. You're seeing guys also true. Yeah, making 40 what million. Saying, so. What's 100 grand? Yeah, so that 100,000, it, it, it sounds yeah. like it hurts for us like not making that money anymore, but yeah. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, you, you got to make it. This, like we said, we've never seen it, so make sure it doesn't happen again. I, I get it. It, it that, we know that was going right at Tony Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> we know that. Come on now. You know that, but like you you you, you know. Hey, Vince, you had too much emotion. You know he threw a short. You know he threw a short on purpose. He didn't really want that contact for real. He know what that looked like. All right, Vince, he didn't want that contact Vince, for real. Let me ask you this for still on. If that was Draymond that threw that what five game it, suspension it, you, done you know for it. 10 games. You know it. That's, Ten that's games. what I'm saying. So that's, Damn. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. So that's, that's, he's a repeat of at the big picture. We know that. He's got prior. He's got if, if it goes, hear me out. If it goes baseline, you throw it. It slides baseline, barely on the court. Ooh, that was at the box. The, the 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 box. Like that is on the court. That's that's, that's my whole thing. We're talking about where the distance he threw it from. He didn't throw it from the middle of the bench. He threw it from the last seat yeah. in the back of the bench <laughs> to the court on the box. He really in did. the paint, just about. But so isn't that's it what, funny though? If it was Pat so, Bev or Draymond, we'd be like, damn, he's, he's, he's a gangster. If it was Jamal free. Murray, we're like, oh, he's just throwing a tantrum. He's just <laughs> having a bad <laughs> yeah, day. He'll be, he'll be fine. But isn't the punishment, the idea of punishment for uh, what could have been too, like worst case scenario, like he got lucky. Because it could have hurt yeah, his imagine teammate. If, imagine that's if Towns fell down and yeah. just rolled his ankle and was out next game. Like, that's all I'm saying. And bullshit. I love Jamal Murray, and I think he's a he's a dog. And I I love what he's bringing to the game, and, and we, they need him, regardless of them, you know, in the situation they are. But at the same time, we have to we have to you know understand. We we make those kind of mistakes. We have to you know pay our dues. Yeah. Uh, speaking of dogs, huh, segue. Jalen Brunson uh, taking New York by storm, just uh, crushing. I don't even know how else to say it. But let's let's play the what if game. 
If the Knicks were to make it to the finals, and it's all very much a part of Jalen Brunson's uh, repertoire at this point, <clears throat> would you consider him the greatest Nick of all time? Whoa. <sighs> That's... I know. I know. It's a big what It's all hypothetical. I'm saying yes, they ain't getting past the Celtics, it's, so it's and, all and hypothetical. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's a you don't know. Uh, things happen. No. D things do, do happen. And, I mean, his... his. I, I, I think there's still work to be done. Like Lou said, I agree. But I, I think you throw his name... His, he climbs the ladder. And, you know, it's... You know, you look at... Like some people say about Kawhi. He did what he needed to do. Mm -hmm. I think if he gets it done... In New York, he wins a championship. Yeah. I mean. Ooh, that that changes things. Legend. You know, <laughs> uh, because he'll still be there. We, that's what, what I'm saying. He wins a championship, and he'll still be there to to continue that legacy. But let, I, I, I say this, and I've said this about current players. Let's let them finish their story and then revisit this. Yeah. Yep. Let them cook. Yeah. If you will. Um, yeah. Or simmer. The, the simmer. Or simmer, <laughs> yeah. I, I, marinate, whatever. The minutes thing. Uh, Josh Hart, obviously, we know is leading that cause, not ever taking any breaks at all. And look, we keep saying how sustainable is it, but they're also losing dudes to injury as we have these conversations. So what is your take kind of on, on their situation as it stands now? So I'm going to go back to one thing I said prior uh, months and months ago. I've always said this about coaches not using their bench during the season for situations like this. And what I mean is, you know, you're losing guys. You look down your bench. You don't feel comfortable playing guys any type of minutes because you didn't use them in the regular season. So I feel like it's important in blowout games or in just in, in some games, you got to give these guys situation. You know, I don't like when you're up 30 going into the fourth, but you play your your rotation guys until three, four minutes into the game when you're still up 25, <laughs> when now these guys can use those valuable minutes for times like this. Now, with days in between, obviously, you know, the technology, it's important for uh, Josh and all the guys who are playing big minutes to take care of their body. Uh, you know, cryo, hyperbaric, chip, whatever it is, got to do what you got to do because obviously you need it and you're in this situation like that. So, that, I, I mean, that's a typical Tim Tib uh, uh, Tibbs thing. He's going to ride his guys and uh, till, till they can't anymore and play big minutes. Okay, well, VC, you played 48-plus minutes 14 times, and in 2001, you played 63 minutes, and you 60, didn't have no cryo that, yeah. chamber Ugh. back then, so no, what the hell did you do? What's that about? That's, uh, just, but, that's just a cold let's... tub. <laughs> That's true. And stretch it. And hey, what did the next game look like? Because, you know, we're not talking about, uh, you know, we're talking about playoffs in regular season. So if we had a back to back, it was no chance I played well. 63? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. it was a double or it was either double or triple overtime against uh, Minnesota. Maybe? What year was that? Kings. King? Oh, Kings. Kings. That's what it was. There you go. That's too. That's too many. That yeah. was. That was. I know uh, JYD was on that team. We had just got him. Uh, oh, three, maybe. Uh, oh. 01. 03. Yeah, it was By close. the way, for the record, the next game, you played 32 minutes and had 19 points. Wow. I mean. Damn near 100 minutes in two games. Half man, half amazing, they say. Huh? Well done, Jeez. sir. Um, 19. 19 <laughs> and, they say, and, and they say NBA players are soft. Well, like, a lot of DC back start hurting thinking about it. Like, <laughs> He's yeah. like, yeah. in the chair. Yeah, like, man. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Edwards, by the way, we, uh, you know, we love Monster. lists. We love saying who's the best, who's what. Right now in these playoffs, would you have him where as far as best players left? 1A. Yeah. I think he, he's right there with Jalen Brunson. I think he's, you know, they're, they're playing the best basketball uh, in the playoffs right now, hands down. I, I love what he brings to the table. I love how he's handling, hand, handling himself. Uh, he's a Hold leader. On, he's a scorer. Uh-oh. You know Lou's going to say SGA. Uh, Lou's gonna, got something. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm running down the wrestling ramp. <laughs> Slide in the okay. ring. SGA, SGA hadn't lost, <laughs> <laughs> hey, had lost a playoff game yet. SGA hadn't lost a playoff game yet. Hey, SGA hadn't lost a playoff game yet, brother. Correct. We got to throw SGA no. in that conversation. No, he hadn't okay. lost yet. Done. That's fair. And I, I, I'm, his, I'm, there's I'm, your third yeah, one. So I'm I rolling. think those three guys are playing some of the best basketball right now, and it's undeniable. It's not even a question. And you're right, Lou. Uh, SGA is, is the other guy uh, I would add on to that for sure.
What a great place to be with these three guys as sort of the face of what it's we're watching. And I, I love it. Yeah. Um, Ants obviously getting all the MJ it. expectations and the comparisons. They're even doing that, the split screen with his face. And, you know, I don't know that he even needs <laughs> advice. I'll be honest with you. He seems to be very much in control. But if you had to give him some advice about expectations, what would you say? Be yourself and keep doing what you're doing. Don't read your, your press clippings. And that sounds like, you know, it's an old, uh, uh, old saying that was said to me. It's like, just... Keep being you. Don't don't change it. Like uh, it's 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 like it's easy to look at social media and and read what's said about you, good and bad. But like, man, right now the, the work is, is is done, and he's just showing us what he's done and who he is. So, I mean, I I tell him right now, don't change the thing. You know, be you. <laughs> Beam. He done right, though. He did right. He came out and said, stop the comparisons. Just allow me to be myself. I love Because the minute I don't live up to the, uh, the comparisons that y'all put on to me, even though I'm going to be a great player, y'all going to say I'm falling short because you're comparing me to such a monumental player. So he's already, he's too he's wise. Already said what he needs to yeah, say about it. it. He's a yeah, wise guy it. for that And that's, that's smart to me, getting in front of that now, you know, where he doesn't have to deal with that headache later. Like, right, let, let me build my own yeah. legacy and my own path. For the next guy to be compared to me doing it his way and i love it we're in good hands yeah that's it that's the show vince we made it to the end of this bad boy you were here with us to get to all the way to the end of this show for uh for all of us we'd like to say goodbye enjoy the game appreciate it bc i'll see you in tahoe that name for you gg jackson tomorrow god you live the life you two gg jackson tomorrow yeah run it back run it back run it back run it back